Hello, welcome back to Bible Reading with Study Guide. How are you? It's fall. Cool out, but real sunny. Okay, we are in the third book of Psalms. I'll read a little bit about it, give you some background. Um, Asaph, he was a songwriter, arranger, and orchestra director under the rule of David and Solomon. He wrote several of these psalms. You can read about him in 1 Chronicles 15. And Second Chronicles 5. And then the sons of Korah wrote a few. Korah was a direct descendant of Levi, son Kohath, and a leader of worship. Remember, Levi was a tribe set apart, by, set apart by God to be priests for his people. And then David wrote Psalm 86. We'll get to that. Okay, let's get started in Psalm 83. A Psalm of Asaph. Truly, God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My, slips had my steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily, and they set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them, and they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the children, to the generation of your children. When I thought of how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely you set them in a slippery place. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they brought to desolation as a moment. As in a moment. They are utterly concerned with terrors. As a dream when one awakes. Oh, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise your image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand, and you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all your works. Here he is stressing at the beginning, kind of whining, but then in the end things are clear. How did the writer almost slip in verses 1 and three through 3? He was envious, wasn't he, of those with prosperity and the boastful. When did he begin to understand how things really were? In verse 17, when he went into the sanctuary of God, and he met God there, right? Then he understood. His mind was clear. Okay, I got it. Who or what was almost was most important to the psalmist? Who or what was most important to the psalmist in 25 and 26? Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. God was most important, wasn't it? And when he put his eyes on God, then he saw things clearly. All right. Psalm 74, another psalm of Asaph. Oh God, why have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance, which you have redeemed, this Mount Zion where you have dwelt. Lift up your feet to the perpetual des desolations. The enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. 
Your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees. And now they break down its carved work all at once with axes and hammers. They have set fire to your sanctuary. They have defiled the dwelling place of your name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them all together. They have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land. I wonder when that took place. At the time when they were carried away and Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple destroyed. Hmm. We do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, nor is there any among us who knows how long, oh God, how long will the adversary reproach? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you withdraw your hand, even your right hand? Take it out of your bosom and destroy them. For God is my king from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea serpents in the waters. You broke the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gave him as food to the people inhabiting the wilderness. You broke open the fountain and the flood. You dried up mighty rivers. The day is yours and the night also is yours. You have prepared the light and the sun. You have set all the borders of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that a foolish people has blasphemed your name. O oh, do not deliver the life of your turtle dove to the wild beasts. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Have respect to the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. O oh, do not let the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and the needy praise your name. Arise, O oh God, plead your cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches you daily. Do not forget the voice of your enemies. The tumult of those who rise up against you increases continually. Wow. It sounds like a lot of bad is going on. What is controlled by God in 16 and 17? The borders of the earth, the day and the night, summer and winter, some the seasons, day and night, he controls it all. Okay. Another Psalm of Asaph, Psalm 75. We give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks for your wondrous works declare that your name is near. When I choose a proper time, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly, Selah. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drink, drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked... I will also cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Okay, that wasn't a very long song. And there's no questions. So let's go on. Psalm 76. Song of Asaph. In Judah God is known. His name is great in Israel. And Salem also his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the arrows of the bow and the shield and the sword of battle. Selah. You are more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are plundered. They have sunk into their sleep. And none of the mighty men have found the use of their hands. At your rebuke, O God, of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse were cast into deep sleep. You yourself are to be feared. And who may stand in your presence when once you are angry? You caused judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to deliver all the oppressed of the earth. Selah. 
Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. With the remainder of wrath you shall gird yourself. Make vows to the Lord your God and pay them. Let all who are around him bring presents to him who ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is awesome to the kings of the earth. Wow. God is something, huh? All right, no questions. Another Psalm of Asa, Psalm 77. I cried out to the Lord my, with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart, and my spirit makes diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be able, will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promises failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. Wow, he's troubled, isn't he? And I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you. They were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Wow. This guy can't sleep, huh? He's really, really troubled. He's trying to remember the good things so that God did. Yes. Okay, any, no, not until the next psalm. <laughs> Excuse me. Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord in his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which commanded our fathers that they should make known them known to their children, that the, children, the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law, and forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the land of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the water stand up like a heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance like the depths. He also brought streams out of the rock and caused the waters to run down like rivers. Remember these incidents? We read about them back in like Exodus, um, some in Leviticus, Numbers, yeah. 
but they sinned against him even more by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their hearts by asking for food of their fantasy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was furious. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel, because they did not believe in God, and did not trust in his salvation. Yet he commanded the clouds above, and opened the, the doors of heaven, had rained down manna on them to eat, and given them of the bread of heaven. Men ate, men ate angels' food. He sent them food to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He also rained meat on them like the dust, feathered fowl like the sand of the seas, and he let them fall in the midst of their camp, all around their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not deprived of their craving, but while their food was still in their mouths, the wrath of God came against them. He slew the stoutest of them and struck down the choice men of Israel. In spite of this, they still sinned and did not believe in his wondrous works. Therefore, in their days, he consumed in futility and their years in fear. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and sought earnestly for God. Then they remembered that God was their rock and the Most High God, their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth and they lied to him with their tongue, for their heart was not steadfast with him nor were they faithful to his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, when he worked his signs in Egypt and his signs in the field of Zoan, turned their rivers into blood and their streams that they could not drink. He sent swarms of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He also gave their crops to the caterpillar and their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines and hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He also gave up their cattle to the hail and their flocks to a fiery lightning. He cast on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending down angels of destruction among them. He made a path for his anger. So he's talking about the Egyptians here now, isn't he? So I think he goes back and forth. He did not spare their soul from death, but gave their life over to the plague and destroyed all the firstborn of Egypt and the firstborn of their strength in the tents of Ham. But he made his own people go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely so that they did not fear. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies and he brought them to his holy border, this mountain which his right hand had acquired. He also drove out the nations before them, allotted them, and inheritance by survey and made the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents. Yet they tested and provoked the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bull for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. When God heard this he was furious the greatly and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, Shiloh, the tent he had placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He also gave his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given in marriage. 
Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord woke from his sleep, like a mighty man who shouts because of wine, and he beat back his enemies and put them in perpetual reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built a sanctuary like the heights, like the earth, which he had established forever. He also chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ewes that had young, he brought them to shepherd Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Wow, what a history. Excuse me. I'm sure there must be some questions here for 78. What did God command the fathers to do in verse 5? He commanded the fathers to do what? That they should make known to their children all the ways of God, all that God had done for them. And then they were to pass it on to their children. Why were they to pass on their knowledge to their children? Why was this important? That they may set their hope in God and not forget his works, but keep his commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn, rebellious generation. So they wouldn't make the same mistakes, right? Okay. Why was God angry with them in verse 22? Because they did not believe him. They did not trust him. What kind of food was manna in 24, 25? Bread of heaven. Angels food. Wow, that must have been something. Angels food they were eating. Bread, literal bread from heaven that came running falling down out. When they got up in the morning, there it was laying all around them. Can you just imagine that? Angel's food. Wow. Okay. How were God's people hypocritical in 36 and 37? How were they hypocritical? Uh, they flatter him with their mouth. Lied to him with their tongue. Their heart was not in it. They'd say things, but their heart didn't. It wasn't who they really were or what they really thought. Okay, another psalm, Psalm 79. Another psalm of Asaph. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. Your holy temple they have defiled. They have laid Jerusalem in heaps. The dead bodies of your servants. They have given us food for the birds of the heavens, the flesh of your saints to the beasts of the earth. Their blood they have shed like water all around Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to your, our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to those who are around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not know you and the kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Oh, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to meet us, for we have been brought very low. Help us, O oh God of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us and provide atonement for our sins, for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Let there be known among the nations in our sight the avenging of the blood of your servants which has been shed. Let the groaning of the prisoner come before you according to the greatness of your power. Preserve those who are appointed to die and return to our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom. The reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise 
to all generations. Well, come help, Lord. Come help. That's 79. It just says compare Psalm 79 to Second Chronicles 36.15. So what was happening here? Second Chronicles 36.15. So, because they were being hypocritical, God brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who absolutely destroyed them. And all of the articles that was in the temple, all the fine gold things and everything. Okay. I think that was the only question. You know, we don't have enemies like this, do we? But we have enemies of our soul. And now we can pray these exact same kind of prayers, I think. Maybe your enemy is fear. That's a real enemy. Worry. Um, maybe you have an addiction problem. Alcohol or drugs or some other kind of addiction. Something that has a hold on you that just ruins your life. Think about these psalms and pray to God using these words. There's a lot of words in here that we can use that don't have to do with specific enemies. That we can use for the enemies of our souls. Right? I think so. I think that makes sense. Okay? Alright. <laughs> psalm 80. Another psalm of Asaph. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to us and save us. Restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made a strife to our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow, the mighty cedars with its boughs. She sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges? so that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit. fruit. The boar out of the woods uproots it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see, and visit this vine. Vine is a picture of Israel, right? But it can be a picture of us, too. And the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself, it is burned with fire, it is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man, whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Wow. Oh God, please listen. What does the psalmist repeat three times in 3, 7, and 19? Restore us, cause your face to shine on us. Restore us, cause your face to shine on us. Restore us, cause your face to shine on us. Yep. And we shall be saved. What is Israel compared to in 80 verse 8? A vine. You can double check that with um, Isaiah 5, 1 and 7. Just past Psalms a little ways. Isaiah 5. And now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. And he planted it with the choicest vine.
And in verse 7 it says, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. Okay, so the vine was Israel. Okay, that's it for today. We'll continue on next time with these psalms.